what I'm about to tell you, it's really complicated to understand. But uh, I'll do my best to describe what I encountered, and uh, hopefully so that no one has to encounter these things as I did. I just finished my tour in Afghanistan, and I finally finished my contract with the army. I got to surprise my family, knowing that I'm alive, and survived a non-stop battle overseas. My parents were very proud of me, but I'm the one who got more of the surprise. Uh, they actually surprised me with a German Shepherd puppy. <laughs> uh, we named her Samantha, Sam for short. My dad was happy that I was back home, but uh, he had to sleep early because he told us that he had to escort a group of teens from the popular YouTube series who were uh, coming to our city for a meet and greet. Knowing how hard my dad works, he deserved a break. He was sadly getting old. He, he recently told me by video call uh, during my deployment that his back was hurting and that he had to sit every 10 minutes. You know, I I felt bad for him. I told him that I would take this shift for him. My dad and I went back and forth about this, but he eventually gave in. He let me escort them. However, he told me that this part of the job was more important because the manager of this group was highly respected and I needed to make a good impression. Next day came by put on a good shirt, tie, pants, and shoes, and of course I brought Sam, because, you know, why not? I got in contact with the industry where my dad works and informed them that I was his son and that I was taking over his job temporarily. They called him as well to confirm, and we were all set. They even gave me the cell number of the bus driver, uh, Mike, that would be driving us around the city and to the rental house before the meet and greet. I looked at the profile of this group my dad informed me of, and uh, it appears that there are 15 of them in total. Nine kids, five adults, and their manager as well. I waited for him at the airport, along with Sam sitting down by my side. Mike was behind me with the bus. I then saw a plane that had just arrived, and while holding the name of their YouTube series, the group saw me and I saw them. They were exactly as the profile described. I introduced myself, and they introduced themselves as well. And of course, they were all over Sam. I mean, <laughs> uh, who could blame them? I shook hands with them, and uh, I assumed some of them were the mothers of the kids and the manager. We then loaded their bags onto the rented bus. Mike then drove all of us to the rented house. We finally reached the address. I mean, I gotta say, it was a... It was a hell of a two-story house. We unloaded the bus, and the manager met with the rental owner of the house, got hold of the key, and finally made our way inside. It was indeed the duplex. <laughs> uh, there was a kitchen next to the living room, a huge TV, and while the kids went to go look outside, there was this big open field of grass, a pool with a rock formation attached to it. Sam was just happy to run all over the open field, and the girls ran after her and started to pet her. However, just when things started to be settled down, the manager called me over to translate some words for this gardener who was working there. I talked to the gardener, and we spoke in our uh, <laughs> uh, typical Mexican roots, giggling and calling the manager a butthead, making fun of him, but got serious and came to a conclusion about the work that we had to do. We went our separate ways, the manager asked what the gardener and I said before he left, and I told him not to worry about it. <laughs> it's something he'll never know. Well, we got settled in. We then went to go out to eat at Friday's. Uh, Soon after, we went back to the house and tried to get a good night's sleep for tomorrow, because uh, I, I guess they were doing some type of promo for their YouTube video at some place during the night. I, I don't know. But that night it was quiet. 
Crickets were singing, the moon was shining high in the sky, being the world's nightlight. But that was when Sam started barking outside. I told her to stop, but she just kept barking. I went to look at where she was barking at. There was nothing there. I grabbed her and took her to the couch with me, and she finally got to sleep. The next day came about, everyone came downstairs and got all brushed up, went to a diner to eat breakfast, went to that place for their promo video, then later came back to the house for a skit that they planned to do. I stood out of their way for them to do this skit, sat down on the couch with Sam, playing with some of her favorite chew toys, and one of the girl's younger sister, who we'll call R, came to talk to me, play with Sam as well. R was petting Sam, and then she saw my tattoo on my forearm, which had a skull and crossed rifles. You're military, aren't you? She questioned. I was. I just uh, finished my contract. Now I'm here covering for my dad. She smiled, and the rest of the girls came back, and Sam just ran outside. I'm thinking maybe she just needed to uh, release the beast, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> but, but again, she just started barking again like from last night. I thought maybe she just saw a squirrel or something, but, but then I saw her scratching the grass. We all went to see what she was doing, and and to our surprise, she saw something that we didn't before. There was a handle to an almost covered door latch. I pulled Sam aside and grabbed the handle, pulling with all my might. The girls tried helping me open it, and eventually we did. There was a dark hole that we couldn't see the bottom to. How far do you think it goes? One girl named Kay asked. Let's see, I said. I went to go grab my bag. It had stuff I needed for situations like this. I grabbed a glow stick, cracked it on, and dropped it down the hole. Five seconds it went, and we saw the glow stick hit the ground. Uh, so, suffice to say, there was a bottom. Uh, I'll go check it out, I said, but the girls didn't want me to go down there. I told them that I'd be fine, yet they insisted on me not going. I then took out my walkie-talkies, told them that we'd keep in touch with this, assuming that they turned it to Channel 5. I also grabbed some rope I had, tied it to a palm tree that was nearby, securing it, and the girls told me to be careful as they held on to Sam as I was preparing to go down. I then went down the hole. Of course, I wasn't going down unprepared. Uh, I had a night vision scope and a registered 9mm with me. Because who knew what I was going to encounter? I did a quick mic check with the girls. Uh, they heard me, so I lowered the volume down, and I saw an opening on my left as my feet hit the ground. There were two sides, uh, left and right, but I went left. And from what I saw, it just looked like pure darkness. I mean, it almost looked like a tunnel, but I was still walking with my scope. I managed to see a path with a bit of water forming like a, like a line, almost like a sewer drain. Nothing much, really, I thought. I felt a bit disappointed, but... Then I started to hear noises from my 12 and 6, and my pistol, now in my hands, my heart was racing. I thought maybe it was just rats, you know, just big damn rats <laughs> running around. I kept going. It was still pretty dark and quiet. That was when out of nowhere I heard this loud scream. Like it was half human, half demon. 
It's really hard to describe it, but it filled my body and my ears with shock. I swear on my life, I thought I felt my spirit leaving me for a second. I backed up against the wall, breathing heavily. I hoped to ease my nerves with a little bit of a prayer. It worked for a little bit, but just then I heard the walkie-talkie beep. The girls talking in a panic. Kay spoke from the walkie-talkie. Uh, Eric, we just saw something moving fast, heading your direction. Be careful, it's coming towards you. My heart felt like it was getting squeezed. I pressed the walkie-talkie, asking again, uh, Say again? What are you... That's when I heard heavy thumping noises coming from my six. I turned, and... I swear I thought fighting a war was terrifying, but it was nothing compared to what I was seeing heading towards me. I saw through my scope what looked like a half-mutated, half-human, half-giant rat crawling on all fours incredibly fast towards me, and, and its face. My god. Its face. I just... I just didn't know what to think of it. It had these little strings of hair on the sides, with its sharp teeth forming into a painful grin. Jesus Christ, its eyes. I can, I can barely type this, but... Its eyes were crimson red pure evil. I froze for a split second, but then I got a grip, firing at this monstrosity. I somehow managed to hit it, and it howled in pain, but then I recognized something. It wasn't howling because it was hurt or anything. I realized that it was calling for something. I then heard other howls coming from my six. I didn't want to stick around that much longer, so I hauled ass out of there. I made it to where I entered. I saw the girls asking me what the fuck happened as I climbed out of there, and I told them to help me seal the door latch again. So we heard the growls and snarls getting closer and closer. We finally shut it. Kay asked me what I saw. I didn't say anything. Just then I saw the parents running up to us, asking questions left and right. I just told them that we couldn't stay there any longer. They kept asking questions, but I kept saying the same thing. The manager argued with me, but eventually agreed, after I explained. I called Mike, and we then moved out. The meet and greet came around the corner. I, I still couldn't get the image of that monster I saw in the underground house. The parents try to get an answer out of me again, but, I mean, what the fuck was I going to say? I saw a monster under the house and I almost got killed by it? It'll just make me look foolish. So, I, I stayed quiet. The final day came by, I took the girls to the airport, and we said our goodbyes. I went home, I told my dad everything about what happened, and they were shocked. Later, I settled down afterwards, and later through that night, I was watching TV with Sam on my lap when the news kicked in. We interrupt this program to bring you this bulletin. Earlier this evening, a family was attacked by what they called a giant man-like rat monster, slashing their entire house and nearly killing them. It was not just one. There were multiples of them, but this isn't just one incident that was called. I'm hearing multiple people have called in and had an encounter with these creatures. The police are scouting for wherever and whatever these things are. More news at 11. Shit. Fuck, shit. They escaped. But how? I asked myself. 
I closed my door and locked it tight, realizing I wasn't going to get the answers tonight, but... But now one thing is for sure. And it's that I know that they're coming for me next. Since I was the one who discovered their existence at that house. And... And God only knows how long I have... Until they find me.